Welcome to Jessica Payne Live. I am your host, Jessica Payne. Uh, come on in, sit down. If you are listening to me on the podcast, thank you. Thanks for catching the audio. If you are uh, sitting here live, which it looks like we have a nice gaggle of wonderful friends and comrades, thanks. And if you're watching me on the replay, maybe over on YouTube, thank you, thank you. Don't forget, wherever you're at, hit subscribe so that I can keep sending this wonderful content to you. Uh, today, we're going to jump right in. It's all about podcasting. And I know we have people that are joining me already that have podcasts. Um, it's it's an exciting uh, topic. One, I'm really, um, I've been diving into. I've had a podcast over the years. Uh, and I think now in 2018 is actually the best time to start a podcast. First and foremost, if anyone watching uh, live on Facebook can just uh, tap in the chat real quick, if you can hear me okay. I know last week we had some audio issues. If one of you can just hit yes, I can hear you loud and clear or speak to me in code, that would be fantastic. How's it going, Teresa? How's it going, RJ? It looks like we've got Robert as well. Uh, three of my favorite people. You guys are all go-getters. I, I'm pretty sure all of you have a podcast. Thanks, RJ. RJ says, yes, you can hear me. Fantastic. Um, so I think this is going to be a great uh, discussion. If any of you want to come on camera, I will send you the guest link. I also, uh, some skinny, uh, Dwayne, uh, Richards, who's been a guest of mine in the past, runs his own Udemy course on pad podcasting. Um, a wonderful, uh, colleague and friend up in Ontario. He's going to try to join today as a guest. So, um, and he's got some goodies as well. So if we get Dwayne on, that's going to be awesome. Uh, you might recall Dwayne, uh, was on the show last year. So he's got some great insights in terms of podcasting. So why don't we, why don't we start? First question, do you podcast? You can leave a uh, message in the comments. Maybe if you're listening, uh, you can just answer. Maybe if you're going for a run or a jog right now, take a breath and say yes or no. Um, do you podcast? Uh, if you're like me, you're, there's either people who have podcasted and they're still podcasting right now. They don't. And then there's, I think the majority of us who have tried at some point, maybe we've set it down for a while. Um, podcasting has been around for a minute. Uh, it's been around for ages. And I think for any of you who started a podcast years ago, remember how difficult it was? Like it used to be a real pain. I remember you used to have to hire like a producer to do it. This was back when I was in uh, in my corporate days for a client we had, I think it was for Nintendo. Um, it, this was right when podcasting was first coming out. Hardly anybody knew what it was, but we knew that, you know, it was just one other new fun avenue. And so we were exploring ways to reach gamers and we wanted to do a podcast. And I remember I had to literally go online and find a production company because like apps didn't exist yet. We had to find it. It was basically like creating a doing kind of a mini media tour. We had to go into a studio somewhere and record it or something. I remember it being incredibly cumbersome and it cost money. And so here we are. That that had to be like 10 years ago. Here we are 10 years later. And basically, like a lot of great things, all you need to start a podcast. And I say this for my live show, too. If you're thinking about doing a live course, all you need to do a podcast these days is a smartphone and a reliable internet connection. It's crazy. Um, so I think that if you're, and we're gonna get into like if podcasting is right for you, but for, for the reason why I chose this uh, topic is not only am I kind of jumping back into the podcasting fray, I have found it incredibly rewarding since I started to use a new app we're gonna talk about today called Anchor. Um, and this is something that if you follow uh, influencers like Gary Vaynerchuk, he, he got me onto it. He's been talking about Anchor for a minute. Uh, but then also having had some um, fits and starts with other platforms that I was a little frustrated about. Is podcasting something you want to consider? Well, if you're a little camera shy, but you've got a story to tell and you want to dump a lot of uh, good energy into a powerful new kind of untapped platform to promote your business, you want to consider podcasting. I talked to a lot of people who they're a little nervous to jump on camera. Podcasting can kind of be a nice first step. If you're thinking about a content strategy to promote your business, 
But first and foremost, how about I give you some really cool stats that I came across in case there are any people who doubt the power of the podcast. RJ, you're saying you're starting one. Beautiful. I'd love to hear where you're at in the process. Um, I think you and I have talked about Anchor. I'm curious what apps or platforms you've thought of doing. Um, you know, like anything, I think it's all about giving, take a step back from the tools for a minute and give your story a theme and topics. Because essentially what you're doing when you agree to do a podcast or when you agree to start a blog or when you agree to start a live show is you're basically signing a contract with yourself saying you're going to be a producer and on-air talent. You're signing up for a lot of work. However, it's not as painful as it used to be. And if you use the right tools, this is just like across the board in social media strategy. If you use the right tools, the work is actually, the, the labor side of it has actually decreased. And I think like anything, if you put purpose behind, if you put your strategy hat on and you give yourself a framework and you outline your next steps and you're really, um, really focused on what you're going to be presenting, you'll find actually executing isn't as hard as it used to be. But you are essentially signing up for more work. That's probably one of the first reasons people uh, don't want to do a podcast, because it's like, who wants to sign up for anything more than what they're doing? But what I'm going to share with you today is some pretty cool stats around podcasting to get you thinking about it, because if you're not tapping it, you might be missing out on a really uh, amazing opportunity to create brand awareness in areas where you didn't even think there could be opportunity. If you're a female podcaster or a woman business owner, this is a massive opportunity for you. We need more female voices. Uh, and um, it's just one more channel. Hey, if the influencers are saying podcasting is the way to go, this is the way to go. Teresa is saying, I don't think it's that much work. Of course, that could be because I like to talk and podcast lets you do that. Teresa, that, that's that's kind of a beautiful description of um, finding the right platform for you. Um, if you feel like it's not work and you enjoy it, keep doing it. I couldn't agree with you more. I think the technology has made it easier. So you couple that with the fact that you might actually enjoy doing it. I think you've found the platform for you. That's kind of like me and my live show, but I'm actually falling in love with podcasting for the same exact reason. You got to love to talk a little bit if you're going to be using podcasting, just like you got to be a little comfortable on camera if you're going to be <laughs> live streaming. RJ, you're saying I explored Anchor last night and now I'm addicted. RJ, like, guys, tune in, uh, watch this space because RJ and I will be collaborating, I guarantee you. RJ, there's a really cool collaborating feature. I don't know if you've tried the co-host feature where you can literally just sign up on your phone and start podcasting. So maybe you and I can demo that. Um, I love it. I'm addicted to Anchor as well. Don't worry, you guys. I'll get into Anchor. Christy, how's it going? Christy Hutch, she's saying, I'm going to be starting classes online using my post 9-11 GI Bill to do broadcasting websites. That's so awesome. The world needs your voice, Christy, and your experience. Um, so I'm really excited that you are are stepping forward. It's scary to step forward to get behind the mic. But um I know for a fact that the more people, even if it's just one person that listens to your story and your experience, you're going to help a lot of people out. And that's really what the theme of, I think, um, podcasting and live shows can really do going on air is the best shows are those that are unique to you, where you're using your unique lived experience, where you're bringing in influencers that you that you jive with, where there's chemistry on air where you're using your unique uh, experiences, challenges, um, the highs and lows. I think podcasting like live shows, it, it puts us humans back in front of each other rather than hiding behind a chat, uh, whether we're on camera or not. People can relate to that. And I think that's what we're really hungry for. It's like someone we can relate with. So Christy, if like, if there's another veteran out there who is just like, running or jogging and they're listening to your podcast and they're, and they're like, I can relate to that. You're making a positive change, right? Who else do we have online? We've got a lot of friends here. All right. So again, how about I just dabble a little bit in the power of podcasting? Because if there, if those of you are listening, maybe you're listening to my podcast right now. Uh, let me share why podcasting should really be something uh, you consider. And then we're going to jump into the power um, 
of using a tool like Anchor. Now, I pulled up a great infographic. I'm going to link to it in the comments, and I just want to highlight some of these amazing stats. These are 2018. This is from the 2018 Podcast Stats and Facts infographic. You can find it on podcastinginsights.com. I will link to it in the comments. Listen to this, you guys, and I want to get your reaction. And these are just U.S. podcast statistics, okay? Podcasting, like live streaming, is global, okay? But for those of us in the U.S., 44% of the U.S. population has listened to a podcast. 44%. And if I break up my calculator, what is that like? Over 140 million people have listened to a podcast. Think about that. If only a small percentage of that is your potential audience. And then a small percentage of that might be those who are interested in your organization or your business. Go ahead and crunch the numbers. 44% of the U.S. population has listened to a podcast. That's like over 140 million people. That's crazy. Those are potential audience members, fans, followers. <laughs> Christy's saying Gina needs to get <laughs> to get on it. LOL. I think Gina, Gina would be an amazing um, podcaster. I think any of you watching right now would be amazing podcasters just because I've had conversations with you in the past. Um, that's another thing. People are like, who would listen to me? Well, the same the same argument goes. We, we throw up that argument. I think. I think that's just just saying we're not ready. Yeah. I don't have a magic answer to that. It's the same question I get uh, or excuse I get when people are thinking like they don't want to go. They don't want to start a live show. I can't make that decision for you. I'm just here to tell you if 40 percent, 44 percent of the U.S. population has listened to a podcast, there is an audience for you. Here's some more stats, you guys. Forty nine percent of podcast listening is done at home. Twenty two percent of listening is done in the car. And here's an interesting other uh, tidbit. You've got commuters, you've got runners, you've got joggers, you've got people working out at the gym. Gary Vay uh, has posted an article, and I'll link to that too. He talks about how the um, we're multitaskers. Even when we're at home watching Netflix, we're on Twitter, right? Or even when we're we're at a kid's uh, soccer match, we're we're talking on the phone. We're probably making dentist appointments for our kids, or uh, we're trying to organize plans for the weekends, or we're you know we're uh, we're on Pinterest, right? When we're working out, when we're commuting, when we're uh, taking a break, when we're walking at lunch, we're listening to a podcast. I think that's why these numbers are incredible, it's because we as we become more busy. And especially if we're driving, you know, if you think about how we're busy throughout the day, listening audio is almost the only way we can actually capture someone's attention these days. Because we do so much. Sometimes we're too busy enough to sit and watch a video. That's why, guys, for some of my for actually for every single one of my live episodes, I create an audio version of it. So this episode in a couple of days, you'll see it appear on actually tomorrow, you'll see an audio version of it appear on my podcast, which to some of you, that's how you're actually listening to me. And then I'll create an actual video, a YouTube video of just the audio, and I'll put it on my YouTube. (laughs) It's like, people will actually click on a video just to listen to it. That's how distracted we are and busy we are. But the point is, people will listen to audio. Because our eyes are typically doing something else. Really cool, right? Teresa is saying, I used to worry about who would listen, and now I just don't care. Listen or don't, I'm still going to talk. Yes. That is the secret to any content strategy out there. You have to get over the fear that no one's going to listen. When I started my show, I had no viewers. Then I had two viewers. Then I had four viewers. Then I had 12 viewers. Then I had 60 viewers. And then within the first month or two, one time I had like 4,000 views. Okay. People will come, will gather. When I started my podcast years ago, fits and starts, put it, I picked it up, put it down, picked it up, put it down. Now I'm finding my rhythm. You have to give it time and you have to have faith. Faith is a big word for me right now. So yes, Teresa, I love the fact that you're saying that you just got to believe in your content. If you ever, if you're like me, you're kind of obsessed with celebrities or maybe you're a fan of a certain director or an actor. And I like to watch behind the scenes interviews with them. Um, And my favorite interviews are where they talk about when they first started out. And they're always going to say the same thing. They're like, I wrote this script for me. I started this web series for me. I wrote this 
fan fiction for me. I wrote this blog for me. At some point, you have to just kind of make an agreement with yourself that you're in it for yourself. And the content and actually creating the content is fulfilling yourself. This is what keeps me coming on air every week, you guys. Because some weeks, I don't want to be here. I'll be honest. I'd rather be sleeping. I'd rather be on vacation. But I'm still here. And I think I've only missed two episodes in the last, what, eight months, nine months? So that's what keeps me coming back. And I think that's the important thing with podcasting too. Once you make that agreement, you have to give yourself a little forgiveness, okay? You might put it down for a while. You might get a little discouraged, especially when first starting out. But when you're ready, and I really encourage you to stick with it, just keep going. Does this resonate with anybody? Can I give you a little bit uh, more podcasting uh, statistics out there? And then we're going to jump into Anchor. Check this out. Again, these are U.S. statistics from the podcastinginsights.com, and I will link to them in the audience. Podcast listeners are loyal, affluent, and educated. 80% listen to all or most of each podcast episode. Now, this is critical because even if you jump for, jump to a place like Facebook or YouTube, most people don't, don't watch an entire video. That's the home run. That's where you make your money on YouTube is if you get people actually watching all of your, you know, you get, you log those hours of views, right? But pe- most people don't watch a full a full video or listen to a full episode of anything. We jump around, we're distracted. But the fact that 80% of people listen to all or most of each podcast episode, that is a loyal audience. You have captured their interest. Those are powerful numbers. Like not every single one of you are actually going to listen to this entire episode. I know that. Or maybe watch the full episode. Most of you do, but I know not all of you do. I watch watch my analytics. I know that. I, I appreciate that and I respect that. So the fact that 80% listen to all or most speaks to the power of a podcast. Now, the podcast length can vary. I do three-minute walk and talk podcasts, and then I have my hour-long show podcasts. I go, and I have strong numbers for each. But I know just to offer a little bit of variety. But the fact that most people are actually going to listen to the whole thing, that you can't beat that. That is a, um, that is a, a captive audience that you, I just like you can't replicate anywhere across social media. So what I'm saying is if you have a story to tell, if you have a mission to get out there, if you have something that you want to communicate, I don't care whether you're promoting your business or just creating a cause or just just telling your story, period. The probability that, that you're going to get a captive audience is high. I mean, it's just that's people go to podcasts to. Where people go to social media to zone out a little bit, I think people go to podcasts to actually tune in, which is kind of rare. I um, There's a, uh, a new friend of mine. He's a YouTuber. And we were talking about it. He is a fitness instructor and he goes running and he likes to listen to my podcast as a distraction. But really, if you think about it, I'm distracting him from what he's doing because I listen to Audible and and podcasts too when I run because I'd rather be doing anything but running. So it's like while on the surface it may feel like he's being distracted when really he is absolutely tuning in and he is a captive audience. It's powerful if you think about it. Some of the biggest epiphanies I've had are by listening to podcasts while I'm running. You ever finish a run or a workout, you've been listening to a, a podcast or even a powerful song and you're like, I don't even remember working out. That's because you were absolutely 100% captive, and that's powerful. Teresa says hers are all about 30 minutes. That's a great question. So any of you guys listening, how long are your podcasts? Teresa, yours are about 30 minutes. Teresa, would you mind sharing what your topic is? What's your podcast? Feel free to link to it in the comments. And I'll link to mine. Don't don't worry. Uh, Mine is Brand Organics. It's all about entrepreneur. It's kind of an extension of this show. But I take uh, little bits and pieces. I just finished a four-part series. It's a walk and talk series. I literally walk around my neighborhood. I jump on for three to four minutes, and I ask a question. I like to ask questions, and then it's up to you to answer them. So I did a four-part, and it was all about, uh, and I'll link to that in the comments as well if you want to listen to it. You can find it on iTunes and Anchor uh, and Google Play. Basically, each of the four mini episodes asked a question. And then I tidied it up at the end, but it's, it basically helps uh, align you with your story. Because I think a lot of us, when we're starting a business or making a career change or trying to improve relationships, we're a little lost. So the whole theme of that kind of mini episode, mini series, was um, aligning you with your story. 
So it was a, it was a fun exercise. It was a way for me to play with anchor and I loved it. And the feedback was great. So I do, so Teresa does 30 minutes. I do anywhere from three minutes to an hour, depending. What else? Dwayne Richards is here. Uh, awesome. I'm going to have him on as a guest in a second. Dwayne's got a really cool offer as well. Dwayne, tell us a little bit about your show. How long are your episodes for your podcast? And Dwayne, you've been podcasting for a while now. So I'm glad you're here. A couple more stats on podcasting because I know some of you are running or working out or jogging right now. <laughs> And you just want me to give you information. So I am going to honor that because that's a request that's come to me. A couple more uh, insights from podcastinginsights.com from their 2018 podcasting stats and facts. 44% of listeners are women. 56 are men. 56%. So it's almost a 50-50 split. Women, ladies, this is a massive opportunity for us to create our own mini empire or empire. There are women who listen to podcasts. All right. And last of it, it looks like there is some other stats. Basically, you'll see in this infographic how like uh, year on year, uh, the the percentage of people listening to podcasts um, has ballooned. So really cool, interesting stats, right? So if you ever doubted the power of the podcast, because I was curious too, it's like, how popular is podcasting? I've been listening, I've been hearing about it for 10 years. Is it really a thing? Um, and I've been frustrated as heck with mine just because I've been bored and the tech hasn't been there. But 2018. So you want to start a podcast, famous last words, but I think the tech is finally here. So if you're curious to hear about a tool, um, I want to walk you quickly through Anchor and then I'm going to have uh, Dwayne on to maybe drop some knowledge uh, about podcasting. Dwayne is saying 20 minutes to 45 minutes is his podcast. Interesting. Interesting. I split them into two parts that the interview gets over 35 minutes. Podbean has a file size limit. Great. So that's a perfect segue into platforms. Sounds like Dwayne uses Podbean. I, I used one called Libsyn, which is pretty much, I think, the industry standard for many. So basically a podcast is, once you record your podcast, you can do that 10 different ways. It used to be record it in GarageBand or record it somewhere, finalize it, put music to it, whatever. And then you have the file, typically an MP4. It's really tactical, but for those of you who don't know. And then it's up to you to publish it. And there's sort of a dime a dozen. There's a bunch of different ways you can publish it. And essentially, through these platforms, you can push it out to places that you probably know, like Google Play, Apple Podcasts, uh, Stitcher, stuff like that. So let's take a segue now into some tools or platforms, because I think this is probably the most exciting part of podcasting and why podcasting is going to just explode this year. Again, you've got influencers like Gary Vaynerchuk talking about specific apps as game changers. I feel like the world listens to Gary Vay. And so, you know, he's a smart guy. So so when he first mentioned an app called Anchor, which I'm going to share my desktop right now and show you. Um, there are others. There's Podbean. There's Libsyn. Basically, like anything, there are free and paid for platforms to podcast. What I like about Anchor, and I should say I'm not a paid affiliate for them. I'm just a fan. What I like about Anchor, and that's literally A-N-C-H-O-R, and the website is anchor.fm, they're free. And at first I was skeptical because I think anything free, I'm just like, oh, it's probably pretty limited. And to be fair, it 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 is limited in a way, but its limitations don't affect me. It's got bells and whistles and other, I think, really critical uh, areas. All right. So if you're listening uh, to the podcast, you're listening probably through Anchor. You're, you're listening to me because of Anchor. Um, I have linked in the description to it so you can check it out. But of course, for you guys watching live, I'm going to show you my desktop. Here we go. How many of you have heard of Anchor? I know RJ has. And Dwayne, you're saying I record in GarageBand to save as an MP3. Sorry, I said MP4. I've been editing a video. MP3, sorry. Uh, you guys know. Uh, I used to do that, too. I used to record in GarageBand, save, it, save as an MP3, put uh, intros and outros and audio on it, save it, and then I would publish it through Anchor. And this is my own personal endorsement for Anchor. Uh, I can do all of that. 
in one go from my smartphone. And that's why I like it because you can literally do, you can literally record it, edit it and publish it on your smartphone. What I typically do is I uh, record it and then I switch over to desktop to tidy it up and publish it out within minutes. That's why I like uh, Anchor. So what you're looking at right now is my split screen of Anchor. I'll make me a little smaller so you guys can see. I'm gonna walk you guys uh, through this just really quickly. Um, not necessarily a tech demo, but I know a lot of you have had questions about Anchor. So every day there's a new update on iOS. And I like that while it's annoying to keep having to update, I like it because it tells me the dev team right now is working around the clock to improve the heck out of it. And probably because everyone is starting to use this tool. So here's a couple things. It's available on the app uh, store and Google Play. So it's available for uh, most devices. Anchor.fm is the website if you want to check it out. It, I kid you not, it's free. There's other bells and whistles you can upgrade, but it's essentially free. Um, how about I walk you around this a little bit? So you guys know my email anyway. I'm not really scared about that. So um, here we go. So my, my numbers are humble because I've just ported everything over to uh, anchor, but I'm, I'm loving it because I've only been, I, I moved everything over in February and you can just see the hockey stick of that. Now, when I used a platform like Libsyn, um, I would see kind of a spike and then a, and then a dip. It would, it was just sort of that, um, saw, uh, effect, a bunch of shark fins. But what I've seen with anchor is it just continues to climb. There is no dip. And I think that's what is the, sh what is the game changer for me? With, uh, things like anchor, you can see I've, I've ported, I've pushed it out. It's not just one channel. It's on a bunch of channels. So I'm on iTunes, um, Google Play, Stitcher. I'm on about 20 different platforms, which is good because most people publish just to iTunes or they publish just to um, uh, like Google Play. Uh, but Anchor, a lot, like once you hook up your podcast, your RSS feed to it, it pushes you out to about 20 different platforms. And this is critical if you think about a global audience. Not everyone is going to have Apple iTunes not a uh, podcast. Not everyone's going to be on Google Play. You're going to need to find people where they live, work, and play. That 44% of the U.S. population isn't necessarily going to fall into those two um, kind of uh, uh, platforms. Okay, but then if you think about a global audience, and I do have a global audience, uh, they're, they're going to find you in other places. Here's what's also cool about Anchor. Basically, it sets you up with a public-facing site. Other podcast platforms do this, but I like Anchor because I link to this on my website. So if you go to jessicapayne.us, you'll find I also link to it here. And then boom, all I do when I promote my podcast is point them here and they can just subscribe right here. It just makes that that path so much easier, right? I love this thing. Teresa, you're saying I've heard of it from Gary. Absolutely. Gary Vaynerchuk, yeah. So let me walk you a little bit through anchor and why it's important. And I know it's a little tricky because the app itself on the phone is kind of the game changer, but the, I think the combination of the app and the desktop make podcasting really easy again. So when I do a podcast, I'll open up the anchor app on my phone and I will actually tap it. And you're kind of met with, um, with a, with, it's such a minimalist app. You're met with a few options. Uh, and one is just to simply record, listen, or profile. And you have a little mic uh, image, and you hit record, or you hit, um, I'm trying to get you guys back to the uh, home page so that it doesn't um, try to log me in. Here we go. Try to show you a little bit of a visual. Um, I should have had this queued up before. I just want to show you. Here we go. So I'm going to have this play as I talk to you. So see the app? See how minimalist it is? And I'm just going to keep this up as I go. Basically, you turn on the app and you can record. You can do a few things. You can uh, you just hit a red button and you hit the mic and you record. And once you're done, it actually immediately saves saves the actual recording. No need to jump into GarageBand or anything like that. What you can do then is um, let me see if I can get you a little, nice little screenshot. 
right here is what I want to show you. Bear with me, you guys, because um, I know it's not going to come up on, on, on the phone. Basically, let me see if I can get you an image. Basically, what you do is you open up the phone, and within minutes, you can record your own podcast. That's how I do it. I record it on my uh, phone, and I record my episode. And then what I do is, bear with me, guys. Just trying to get you some sort of image. Boom, right here. It says radio reinvented. I, I, I'm not really a fan of, of that radio, but we'll see. Okay, so basically you are met with a very minimalist app. And what you can do is just a variety of things. You have like a home, a search, a notifications, and a profile button, which you can see in here. But essentially when you open up the app, you have a big old microphone icon that essentially you tap and you are recording. There's no preemptive stuff. There's no prep. You are recording right in your phone. And in fact, Anchor is designed so that um, once you have the app open and you lift your phone to your ear, it can record for you that way. And it's funny in their marketing, they're saying, so you don't look foolish when you're uh, when you're recording. Um, but what I do is I essentially plug in my earbuds and I start recording that way three minutes or, or whatnot. And the audio is pretty, pretty, uh, pretty good. Once you're done recording it, give it a minute and it actually saves to the phone. If you open up your desktop within a couple of seconds, it's already saved there and you have your audio. And again, for me, I like it because I get out of my own way. I'm not required to, you know, I could fall down the rabbit hole of editing it and polishing it. But this is what, what sets Anchor apart for me. Because I don't have to go into GarageBand, I don't go into GarageBand. When I had to use Libsyn before or any other podcasting platform, because I was in the editor, I would just start fussing with it. And my productivity would just tank. This is the game changer for me, and I think it's the game changer for a lot of people, is because we don't, it's almost done, and we, we're not in an editing platform. We are that much closer to actually just publishing the darn thing. So in, in a way, Anchor for me is like, uh, it's like the, the answer to like productivity, because before I simply just like would, would get in my, my own way. All right. So, um, so once you record, what I would recommend you do after that is jump into the desktop version. And any one of you can actually just sign up and do this right now. It'll take seconds. Um, the learning curve for Anchor is like very minimal. I'm going to show you just really quickly uh, what happens when you record uh, a new episode. So I'm literally, you guys, going to do this right now on air just so you can see how fast it works. So I'm recording right now on my app. I'm using Anchor right now. I'm literally recording seven, eight, nine seconds. And I'm going to go ahead and stop. I'm going to go ahead and save it. Now it's uploading on my phone. All right, so I'm going to share my desktop. And I hope this works, because wouldn't that be funny if it didn't? So it's uploaded. So I'm in my, I just literally recorded eight seconds of it. I'm going to go ahead and I'm in my uh, dashboard and I'm going to hit refresh. Give it a second. And I scroll down and what you can see in your dash, the dashboard is pretty intuitive. You can already see saved as a draft. What I literally just recorded is right in the desktop. So I'm going to click on it. And I'm just going to show you some of the magic that happens that I love. Within seconds, it's already on my desktop. By the way, it's on my phone. I can publish right from my phone if I want. But what I like to do is add a few bells and whistles. So you click on this thing called Edit Audio. And here's the really cool thing. I like to add transitions. You can, you can upload a pre-recorded audio file. So, um, Dwayne, for you, that's what you can use. Uh, you can record more right to your desktop here, which is great. Let's say if you want to re-record an intro or, or something like that. Anchor allows you to actually take in messages. You can add messages. People can actually call in like a radio show and record a message. You can put that in the audio. You can also browse audio you've created and pull files from there, or you can do what I love to do most and you can add transitions. I like transitions just to break up the broadcast. I like to add it before and after. There's a fun little ditty called Alley I like to do. And these are just little, these are like loops in GarageBand. 
uh, and they have a ton and they're really high quality. So let's say you have a few segments and you want to break it up a little. Again, rather than having to go all the way into GarageBand and pull that audio in, you can do it right on uh, the the show. So I just added a quick transition. You can pull them around. You can retitle them. This is I'm like 80% almost done with podcast uh, publishing. I'll go in. I'll add information about my episode, and I will hit um, publish now. I can also save as a draft. Or I can schedule for later. It's amazing. It's that it's that that simple. And as soon as you hit publish, you're basically done. RJ, you're saying I absolutely love this feature. Me too. I mean, again, it just it gets us out of our own way. And I know I'm kind of falling down the rabbit hole of demoing Anchor to you. And if you're listening on the podcast, it's a little tricky. But what I invite you to do is just go to anchor.fm and check it out. It takes longer for me to explain how to do this than, than to actually do it. Let me highlight one more feature for Anchor, and then I'm going to bring Dwayne on. Um, basically, one more feature that you have in uh, Anchor, and it's on the app, so I'm just going to describe it to you, is this new feature called Co-host. So when you log into the, uh, when you turn on the uh, Anchor app, you see all this, these floating words kind of go by your screen. And the topics range from new to podcasting to uh, entertainment. And if you tap on any of those words, it basically means there are other people that are looking for co-hosts to record with you. I think one of the biggest um, game changers for Anchor is they understand the power of collaboration. And when you think about social media strategy, all the brands, again, what Gary Vay has been talking about, collaboration is like the, the answer to content strategy right now. It's how YouTubers get audiences. They collab, collaboration. And when I mean collaboration, I mean share the screen, jump on air together, do an episode together, that sort of thing. You can actually add other people. So rather than having to get a conference line and record, I used to have to do that, find freeconferenceline.com and invite my friends to come over and record. And then we'd have to go in a garage band, just have them sign into the anchor app and you're recording. I record a podcast with my friend, Aaron, um, about entertainment. And I'm literally like on my couch Sunday nights on my phone and we're legit recording a podcast. And within minutes, she's already had it published out. Like there's no need to, to use all these other means of connecting anymore. It's a really cool co-host feature on Anchor because now it's like, let's say you don't have someone to podcast with. You just tap on that word or you nominate a word and then they'll find if there's someone who matches, it's kind of like they'll match you with someone who wants to collaborate and then you can jump on and actually record a podcast. I think that's going to be the game changer for Anchor because people understand the value of, pod of collaborating. You guys still with me? Teresa saying I use Facebook audio. I save it and upload it to my platform. Awesome. I've actually never used Facebook audio, Teresa. I'm really curious to see uh, how you feel about that. All right. So how many of you think you might start podcasting now? Wayne, check your email. I just sent you the guest link if you still want to come on with me. For those of you joining just now, I'm talking about Podcasting 101. I shared with you some stats up top. I just walked you through an app called Anchor. It was a little clunky, but hey, anything can happen on a live. Talked a little bit about challenges, and maybe as Dwayne comes on, uh, we can talk a little bit about it. Look, if you're a little concerned about not knowing what you're going to say, if you're a little concerned about thinking no one's going to show up, those are very real concerns. I get the same concerns for people who they know they want to start a live show, but they can't get beyond it. And I can't make those decisions for you, but I'm what I'm here to tell you, what every other creator is going to tell you is everybody starts at zero. Roberto Blake, big YouTuber. Those are his words. Everybody starts at zero. So there's the other advice I hear all the time that I'm just going to echo. Just try it. The cool thing about podcasting with Anchor is it's like, you can record your podcast and you don't ever have to hit publish. Just have fun with it and try it. Like you can just like create your own stuff and just save a bunch of drafts. And when you're ready to publish, publish. But just familiarize yourself with the, the ease of using a really fun tool. And I think that's what half the battle is. It's actually not as hard as it used to be. 44% of the U.S. population listen to podcasts. It's an amazing, powerful tool. I think it's kind of relatively untapped. 
All right. What else can we talk about? Podcasts. So some other platforms you might wonder about. Libsyn, uh, which is a good one, which I, I'm still using. But to be honest, I think I'm going to go ahead and um, uh, ditch it. Libsyn is a platform that Gary Vaynerchuk uses. A lot of influencers use. Um, and I read that just recently. Um, it's spelled L-I-B-S-Y-N. And I will link to it in the comments. Libsyn, I think it's run out of the Netherlands, but basically it, it was sort of the industry standard of how people um, publish. I think the biggest challenge to date has, hasn't been the technology for recording. It's been like, how do I get this across as many podcasting um, in front of as many people as I can? And so you had to go with a publisher that, that, that did that. And that was Libsyn to date. Uh, but you have to pay for Libsyn. So it's going to be interesting because Anchor is free and their their features are kind of cooler and easier to use. So it's going to be interesting to see who is going to try to compete with an app like Anchor. Um, so, yeah. So podcasting, I think, like live streaming, is something that I encourage you to explore. It's incredibly powerful. Uh, the results are there. Um, here's another thing about Anchor. If you have an old podcast you want to port over, you don't have to start from scratch. They actually make it, and this is a game changer too, they make it easy for you to take all of your 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 podcasts from your other channels and, and sign into Anchor. So you, you can bring your legacy with you. Speaking of legacy... <laughs> We have an awesome guest. It looks like we've got you uh, here at Dwayne. I'm going to bring you on. The man. Dwayne, how are you? Fantastic. Oh. Can you hear me? I sure can. Can you hear me? Uh, you sound fantastic. Yep. Loud and clear. All right. We've got Ontario in the house. Mm -hmm. Dwayne, thanks a million for, for joining. I was babbling there because I'm so excited about this. Um, Thanks for coming on board. I know you're going to drop some knowledge because you actually have quite a bit of experience with podcasting. So maybe walk people through who are tuning in for the first time. You teach a course. I mean, walk us through. <laughs> You're kind of the man when it comes to podcasting, right? Uh, in a way, yeah. What we said is we're one step ahead of or one step ahead of our students. You're so humble. I love it. Well, <laughs> the numbers don't well, lie. Yeah, well, what it was was um oh three years ago i i saw i shouldn't drop some of these uh, i don't know if you know uh, i saw sam crawley every day is saturday i saw sam at an event and sam was selling his program like oh wow it's gets you get, it's so like, and sam gets you so excited about podcasts and i'm like yeah but i just didn't have i didn't have the money at the time to yeah to buy a program and then my experience with buying programs and then implementing isn't hasn't wasn't so good I can appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. And some of us are, <clears throat> excuse me, some of us are online learners, self learners. And then other of us, like, we just need someone to hold our. So I came back and I have a mentor or colleague here. Uh, and she had a couple of YouTube videos and she kind of held my hand to say, it's, it's not actually that hard. Like, the tech of setting up the podcast is not that hard. Right. It's the. It's like the nervousness of what do you say? Yeah, that's what the am biggest going, animal. Just like live what? streaming. Just like live streaming. I, yeah. So I actually started live streaming around the same time. And I found live streaming actually easier because it's spontaneous and I'm not trying to be perfect. It's not necessarily scripted. When I do the podcast, I'm trying right. to make it just sound right. And there's like, you have it scripted. And then scripting isn't natural. Yes. Yeah. I mean, unless it's like the 40s where we're reading like a, a, a or like a news broadcast we really news shouldn't broadcast. be yeah. scripted right right so you have a you have points to it even the the facebook live so now i do my facebook live like my morning live colorful conversations it's structured so there's a color you know tuesday was communication tomorrow's relationship to, uh, thursday's business friday's money and then saturday's free for all uh so there is a structure someone wants to right. tune in <clears throat> They know what they know what they're tuning into. Right. Uh, the podcast then, as the podcast evolved, probably my last um sixty some episodes, about a year and a half, and probably 
the last 50 episodes are all interviews. Because then I like, I love being the host. I love just bringing on like interesting people. Right. You've been on my, I think you were on my show. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if you've been on the podcast or just the Facebook Live. Not I've been the just podcast. the Facebook Live. Stay tuned. We'll, we'll, do we'll, a, get you, we'll, we'll get you on the podcast for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, online. And, yeah. yeah. And then, for example, like the last couple episodes, I just interviewed a colleague. So actually, she was my recruit. She actually recruited me into my last full time, my corporate job five years ago. Uh, actually, seven years ago, and she helps place um, CPA accountants. So I'm like, I'm gonna go back and connect with my CPA colleagues. So this is how it evolved. So I'm gonna have a series of podcasts that are interviews with other CPA accountants who are doing things that are completely different than when they got their CPA designation. When they got their designation, they were being audit, they were doing auditing or taxes, and now they're like one of the women I interviewed. She's a Divorce mediator. Ooh. That was not her intention when she got her CPA designation. Right. But when she went, but when she went <laughs> through her divorce and she did most of the work herself, she's like, Oh, I could do this for other people. Right. This happened at the same time she got restructured out of her corporate job. So she's like, Great. I'm going to do this full time. So I interviewed her. It happens that she is my media and the media we are using for ours. Uh, and we just interviewed her and she said, okay, here's how I, you know, became do like 20 years later. This is what I evolved into. So the podcast is just, but I still like meeting people like yourself. So that's just, so again, you can big umbrella. So as a quick tip, drop some tips rather than just rambling as a quick tip, drop like a big umbrella. So the overall podcast is called calm cafe, colorful conversations is the big theme and then I can have conversations with CPAs I could have conversations with authors and coaches and speakers and mm-hmm. and then you can just you know, segment it and then you use your tags in your episodes to say and then you could line it up so hey you want to listen to the series about coaches on marketing then mm-hmm. find the hashtags on marketing coaches and there's my interview with Jessica yeah if you're interested in CPAs or what CPAs may have to share Tag, and there's like eight different episodes about CPA accountants. That's I fine. love it. That's a great tip. Rather yeah, than, I think. Because some of you are all oh, going to have multiple shows. I'm like, no way, you're not. Like, let's be honest. It's it's a challenge to produce one show, let alone like three distinct and separate shows. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's I, my tip. I put at a high level, and then. Yeah. Slicing That's this. really powerful stuff. I mean, I think it's like the, our first instinct is like we get really excited and then we go way too broad and then we're like, we need to rein it in. Like I'm kind of dealing with this uh, challenge currently on my YouTube channel. It's like, what is this going to be for me? But I like that umbrella. It's sort of like, so my podcast is called Brand Organics. And if you go to my website, you can understand what Brand Organics means. It's basically my methodology, my approach. It's sort of a holistic, right? So my umbrella is going to be uh, not just my live show every week because it kind of touches on those points, but it's also asking some of those broader questions. To, it's all, you know, we've talked about this. It's all about alignment, right? Okay. So that's why I'm supplementing uh, these episodes with my walk and talks to, 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 again, to your point, it's like touch on that umbrella. And I like it because it's sort of, I think it's okay to be a little broad when it comes to podcasting because yeah. um, I, I think people are more for, more forgiving that way versus it sounds like on other platforms to be a little bit more niche is like the, the way to go. So and, and some people may not listen because they can listen to it at the leisure of their own time. That's right. And they can go through and say, Oh, there's, Oh my wow, this guy's interviewing a doc. He actually is a professor at uh, one of our top universities in Canada. And mm-hmm. we interviewed about mindfulness. Like, oh, wow. Mindfulness. Sounds one good. of my I'll favorite that subjects. Episode. I can listen to that episode, but you may not care about my episode with the CPA talking about what new CPAs need to know, like what skill set they need to know. You exactly. may be interested exactly. from a branding and a marketing point of view, like, oh, I, maybe I'd like to know from a marketing point of view. But I'm like, no, I don't really care about that. Just skip over it. Just don't listen to that one. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. And I think that could be, that could be an, an area to kind of overthink and halt productivity it's like 
again, a lot of people that are pot are creators didn't go to school for what they're creating, didn't go to film school, but they're on YouTube, didn't go to, you know, broadcasting school. You know, I, I wasn't a broadcast major. I was a communications major. So we're all kind of learning. And so that self-doubt can creep in uh, sometimes just overthinking. But that's a great tip. It's sort of remember, like, it sounds like keep things broad um, and just know that people are going to listen to uh it just like this show, I've learned it. Like some people are going to care about podcasting and some people I know that tune in every week. I don't, I don't see them tuning in live right now. It's like, I know it's not really a priority for them. And then next week it's like a bunch of different people will tune in. Cause like yeah. last week I talked about self doubt this week, I'm talking about podcasting, but it all relates. I like to yeah. think so. Yeah. All right. And then, uh, you know, I have like my magic cards here. So, Oh, I got to remember to stay inside the box. Remember when you're nice. doing Facebook Lives is that you're narrowed. Uh, and then what we did is we, so for example, we created with a mentor, right? We last, a year ago, January, we created a thing called Podcast Buddies. So I started a podcast and then we said, hey, if I can do one, like you can do one. Like it's not, and then it's like, what are the basics? Like the basics, basics, like not about how to get sponsorships and not about how to like, no, like just how to pick up your phone and start talking and then what are the basic things? So iTunes, iTunes says you need five things for your podcast. Mm -hmm. Do you know what they are? I'm sure you do. It's probably a combination between tech and structure. No, it's all, it's all, it's all really structure. You need a title. Title. What is the title? What is the name of your podcast? It's, this is very technical stuff. What is the name of your show is one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's the tagline? So what's that? So like mine is Calm Cafe, and then it became Colorful Conversations. So Colorful, colorful Conversations becomes the tagline. Right. The short description, so with like the one okay. sentence, two sentences, the yep. long description. Yep. And the album cover. That's it. Yeah. So that's what, um, so that's what um, iTunes says you need for your show. So what happens now when we are onboarding people, we're like, okay, here's the PDF. Sort this out before you get on a call for me for an hour to talk about the technical things. Like, figure out what your show is. Because I got on the call with people and like, I don't know what my show should be. I'm like, well, I'm not your branding specialist. Like, go back. Like, I can help you. Right. We actually do oracle card readings to say what is the purpose. And it's really fun because we do a seven card reading about the what, the why, and what the overall message of your okay. podcast is. So if okay. someone's a little bit spiritual or open to some, it, it, I've done it with a number of clients and it just blows their mind. Um, we switched to a woman, she now does guided meditations with singing bowls and, oh, yeah. and, uh, and it's, it changed her, it changed her business. And we just picked seven, she picked the card, seven cards and we had it. Yeah. Um, so it's just using different tools and that's your, like, what's the, if you look up my profile, it's like the CPA, CA, CMA accountant is a financial advisor is talking about Oracle cards for podcasting. Isn't that fun? And it is. Um, but, it all, but it all makes sense if you look closer. Yeah. You're yeah. speaking my, my language and you know you are. Uh, yeah, about, yeah. Like, and then, about, and then we bring about Oracle and then what, cards. Yeah. And then color and saying, like, what is color and why, what colors mm -hmm. should be in your logo and well, yeah. that, that's different. But then yeah. for today, what I wanted to share with you guys, with your listeners, because you have awesome listeners. And uh, so we just came out with a new course on Udemy or Udemy yes. like Tell two weeks ago. That. Yeah. And it's just, uh, it's a simple course. It's a simple course called Podcasting the Basics. Yes. And I'm going to so link I, to it, you guys, right now in the comments. Yeah. And uh, so... Because we're not, I didn't want to hold your people hostage. So we sent you the link. So if they want the 60% off version, um, yep. they can click on the link. And then if they want the free, or the complimentary version, it just costs people an email address. Oh, it works. It's marketing. Uh, yeah. And then they can just message me or email me at info at DwayneRichards.com. And I'll send you an email like I did to you this morning uh, yeah. with a link. And you can just click on that link and you can get the course for free. Guys, I would strongly encourage you. And I just, I shortened it into a, a shortened link. But right here yeah. in the comments, um, it's 60% off uh, of Dwayne's. $10. 
That's a, that's ten dollars. <laughs> and if you go, if you jump over to Udemy, it's just and you look at any one of Dwayne's courses, like you've got a lot of students. It, it's it really it's, speaks to. Yeah. And you know then, what, you're, you, what you're doing, my yeah. friend. And then what I have is I had a mentor. So I have a mentor, um, Scott Patton. So Scott is actually the right. podcasting, and he has one of the top-ranked podcasters. Like, well, what, you went and created a course to compete against your mentor? I'm like, no, I didn't. Um, Scott's podcasting course is 40 hours, 4-0, four 40 wow. hours of info. And I'm like, that's overwhelming. You'll, you know, Jessica, you'll take that course and you won't take it because you'll just go in there. Like, oh, that's, I don't have 40 hours. Yeah. Mine's less than, mine's about half hour, 40 minutes max. And it right. just goes through the really, like we said, we talked about the really simple things like, is it a monologue podcast? Is it a co-host podcast? Is it an interview? Like you just have to, some really simple things you have to say before I, I can pick up my phone but just a couple of things you have to make a decision on and they're simple decision making things, but you have to decide, is it a monologue? Is it just me talking or do I want to interview guests? Mm -hmm. If I want, if I want to interview guests, then I need to add some tech, either zoom, Skype, Facebook live, different things. Like this is a podcast, right? Like you can take this and convert it, take the audio yeah. to podcast. Yep. And just, Getting people to say, oh, a podcast sounds so technical. I was like, well, if you, like, technically, if you had a phone call with a friend, you just need a way to record it, and that's yeah. a podcast. Like, it's, a podcast is just a pre-recorded, yeah, whatever, that's played at a later date. That's, anyway, yeah, that's, so we created that course as a front end for our podcast buddies program, so that when I met someone, I said, here's the first piece of onboarding. Take the course, figure out what the title of your show is, and then call me, and then you get the next steps in our in our online program of podcast buddies. And also, people can join. I don't. I'll add you if you want. I don't think you remember yet. We have a free complimentary, which is also free, uh, Facebook group called Podcast Buddies, where people join. We have about 130 members. Some people oh. are podcasters. Some people want to podcast. Some people don't want a podcast, but want to be guests on podcasts. Yes. And then you can just kind of go in and introduce yourself and then people can. Yeah. And then we put tips in. So like I actually linked, I shared your, I shared this episode into that group. I'm like, well, Hey, Jessica's talking about podcasting. Why don't I just put that into my group and my group can listen to Jessica and Thank you, sir. listening to me about end advantages of podcasting. All right. Uh, yeah. yeah. So that's, so if they want, uh, you just have to find Podcast Buddies on Facebook, uh, ask to join, and I'll add them. Is it at um, – send me a link, and I, I'm happy to um, put oh, it yeah, in the, it's a, in it's the a, comments. We, yeah, because we have two groups. We have our yeah. our free one, and then there's a we have paid members, like people who have paid us to help them right. podcast, right. in which case we, um, we have a paid group where they just get a little bit more. Got it. Works. Guys, this members is, get, anyway, that's go ahead, Dwayne. Yeah, so that was so. Thanks for having me jump in and on sure. today and in and out. And. Well, it's it's helpful, right? And I think one of the like anything. So I teach a course on live streaming. You teach a course on podcasting. They, they there's a lot of similarities. I think honestly, in terms yeah. of the concerns, the challenges, even the tech. Um, but then it's also, I think a lot of what we do is a lot of myth busting. There's a lot of what people think mm. is involved when actually that's no longer the case. As tech continues to improve, the execution of it is going to come down to, and you said it beautifully earlier, it's, it's more, it's more about the personal side of, <laughs> of, and the personal yeah. challenges rather than actually the execution. Um, so yeah, guys, if you're interested in just checking out, um, it's on Udemy, which is a great um, e-learning or, or, or online learning course. But I've linked to the 60% in the comments. Um, and it sounds like, and I will link to the um, the Facebook group that that uh, you've uh, mentioned. But, yeah, it sounds like any parting words, Dwayne, in terms of those who might be considering uh, podcasting? Have fun with it. Like, some people get overwhelmed. It's like, how am I going to make like, yeah, oh, Gary Van. Like lots of people are like, how I I want to make money with it and just yeah. don't um as well as don't necessarily make it part like don't force it to be part of your business. 
Yeah. I have it connect, but if you're doing it as a, as if it's part of your job or part of your business, um, you may not do it as often because then it just becomes like work. It becomes a chore. Yeah. Sure. So it's a tactical, so it can be a tactical component, just like Facebook lives, yeah. email marketing, whatever your, whatever your flavor is. Um, Insta, you know, people like Instagram video. Like if you're, yeah. really just like if you're, if your followers are on Instagram, then do Instagram video. Like don't do Facebook lives. Like, yeah. Um, actually I'm going to check out the anchor. I think I looked at anchor, but I didn't start. Um, because I'm also as a, I put on my accountant hat and I'm like, I actually, I was on Facebook, I was on BeLive and I was paying for a paid membership and I haven't used it lately. So I, I went back to the free model. I'm like, I love BeLive, but I, I've been doing most of my Facebook lives just on Native, Facebook. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, why am I paying for something that I don't, I'm not utilizing? So exactly. that's my tip for marketers or for those small business owners who we are our own marketers. Hey, just check in once a month or so, like once every couple of months, just check in to say, what monthly subscriptions am I paying for? Yep. And am I using them? Great tip. Uh, of course, from a CPA. It was interesting because um, we're just through tax season here in the States. And, you know, I think that's when we're all forced to look at certain expenses. And I caught a few monthly subscriptions that I'm like, I no longer use it. So spring cleaning, that's a good tip. It's sort of spring like cleaning. take a Take a hey. look at your monthly subscriptions, you know, for Libsyn. That's why I'm going to drop them, you know, and, and stick with Anchor. Uh oh, what do we got there? It is called Wood Elemental. It's the color olive, and olive is new beginnings, and olive is also the color mm -hmm. for spring cleaning. There you go. So I love since how you wrap that in there. Love since it. you brought up spring cleaning. And what I'll do is I will, if it's okay, I will put a post, I'll tag a, a coupon. Uh, yes. Actually, no. So what happens is if people sign up, mm -hmm. I will send them because I also have a tax course. Of course I do. Mm. I have a core tax course on Udemy, and it's really for people that are just getting started. So if you have, even if you have a home-based business, the tax advantages of having a home-based business, even if you have a nine-to-five job, and why you want Ooh. to have a home-based business. So I have a yes. uh, – and I can um, – so if anyone signs up, if you sign up for the podcasting course, all they have to do is text me or message me and I'll send them the link and they can have the tax course for free. Cool beans. And is that Canada and the U.S.? Is that specific to? Yeah, it works. It works for both. It's, it's somewhat Canada focused, but a lot of the content is a lot of the content is relevant, is is good for the U.S. And even I, I because I have students in India, like I have a student like. 120 or 28,000 students and like 20, 20% like of them are in Asia. Um, Do you guys hear that? 28,000 students. Just saying. It's just amazing. Saying. That's it's incredible. Fun. It's fun. And then, um, and all I say is I just put the qualifier to say, yes, I am a CPA certified licensed financial advisor in Ontario, Canada. Mm -hmm. So these tips are good, but always consult your local tax authority. So if you're in the state of California, yes. Still check your California CPA because even stuff that applies in California may not apply in Florida. So it's just you got to you have to do your due exactly. diligence. You're in business. Take ownership of your business and don't say, oh, well, I took this course on Udemy and the guy said I could write off like daycare and it may not be true. Yeah. Perfect. Yes. Send uh, information. Guys, if you have a question about that, I love that little nugget at the end. I'm sure we can all uh, use that information. So a nice little tip there. You're just like filled with a ton of resources. I love it. Uh, that's good. Yeah. And then, like I said, it all comes back together as, as an advisor for business owners. Yes. We could all save a little dosh right now. Dwayne, yeah, have, your, I, have, you filed your, have you filed your taxes? Yes, sir. Is there your deadline soon, right? And it was, it was, uh, it was just, oh, it's, right. it just passed. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yes, I know they then, extended it or something because their website crashed and. Oh yeah. A day. <laughs> we I got mine done. Right. Yeah. I got mine done last week. Um, mm. because our deadline, if you owe, if you owe tax money, our deadline in Canada is April 30th. Got it. But you know, a lot of people that run their own business, they, they all file for the extension, which basically gives them to October. But 
I'm of yeah. the mind of like, get it done. Cause what's going to change in, you know? Yeah. We have until June 30th to file, but if you owe money, you have to. Right. By April 30th or else um, late fees and penalties. And that's the thing. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah. So I've got a good, I've got a CPA that keeps, ah, keeps me moving. I know. Part of your advisory team. Everyone should have, even if it's not a full time, but everyone should have a, a CPA advisor. Oh, yeah. Consult. I mean, that's good. That's a good tip to leave off of. Like surround yourself with people that are experts in their field. You know, be it tax, be it podcast, be it live show, be it whatever. Recognize where it might be um, smarter for you to, to, to leverage the power of other people. Because um, I think one of the biggest things that has prevented me from moving forward in a lot of areas is I try to take it all on. That's a whole other show. Maybe you can join me for that show. But, yeah, don't, uh, don't, don't, don't go to my website. <laughs> As a yeah, case of point, the case of point, the website is it needs, it needs some work. And people yeah. are like, I went to that website and I'm like, yeah, that's what happens when you try to do it yourself. The cobbler has no shoes. The cobbler has this, no this shoes. Accountant, right? This accountant that has filed his tax returns, including my sales tax return. And I am up to date, including I have my will and power of attorney all in place as well. So I am, I can sure. consciously, I, I wasn't always that way, but I can now consciously sit across the table from my clients and advise them knowing that um, I am good. That's all that matters. It's all about integrity, my friend. Dwayne, thanks so you. much for- As a branding person, I know I love your, you know, I love the, the nice deep magenta color of the brand there. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. It's all a conscious effort. I know you're big on little, color too. It's a little different. It's a little deeper than that magenta, but it's yep. burgundy. That's right. Exactly that burgundy. Um, Talk about that later. We Another we totally episode. can. Well, thank right. you so much for coming on, Dwayne. I've got the sixty percent off, you guys. If you have any questions about podcasting or anything that's Dwayne, Dwayne's covered, just leave it on the comments here. I'm gonna babysit, make sure that I can answer all the questions you have. You can always reach out to him directly too, but I've got you here. If you've been listening this whole time on a podcast, which 80% of you have then, according to Seth, mm -hmm. thank you, thank you. Uh, if, for any, if you have any questions about the show, maybe you want to be on the show, learn more about it. For anything and everything, first and foremost, hit subscribe wherever you're at. And secondly, uh, just visit jessicapain.us to learn more about me, learn more about the show, come on the show as a guest. Dwayne, thanks a million for joining. Thank you. And we'll see you guys soon. Have a great Bye. day. The podcast you just heard was recorded with Anchor. If you want to make your own, download the Android or iOS app completely free from anchor.fm slash podcast. That's anchor.fm slash podcast.